The year was 2016, and the Summer Olympics were in full swing. All eyes were on Ibtihash Muhammad as she scored her winning touch. I remember watching this moment being totally blown away by the history unfolding before me. This was the first time a U.S. athlete had competed and medaled while wearing a hijab at the Olympics. Since then, modest fashion has exploded in popularity, with designers and influencers alike embracing the style and covering up their entire body. In fact, the sector of the fashion industry is expected to reach $375 billion by 2025. But despite the increased interest, misconceptions surrounding modest fashion continue to persist. Modest wear had this kind of, these negative connotations that, you know, it's cult-like fashion. People just believe there's a lot of restrictions when there really isn't. Many see modest fashion as oppressive or boring, and particularly in sports, the clothes are often deemed hazardous or restrictive for athletes. And that's simply not true. In this episode, we'll explore what it means to be a modest dresser, why people are choosing it, and ultimately, why modest fashion is more than just the trend of covering up. I've always known about modest fashion, but I never really took the time to dive deeper until I met my friend and colleague, Fatima. She's always slain and looking put together, and she's actually the one to introduce me to this episode's first guest, Efra Jama, a Minnesota fashion designer who recently launched a modest activewear line called Jenna Fitwear. Jenna is my daughter, my two-year-old. And Jenna means heaven in Arabic. As Muslims, this is where we strive to be. I That's our that. goals. This one is my favorite. This is, I call it the to-go mom. It opens up here, so you can just, you know, have it here. The cool thing about this one is, you can open the sides. So oh, you can work that's cool. When I think of fashion, I think about how that, you know, my culture is part of it, my beliefs are part of it. When I show up to spaces, I'm comfortable, I'm confident, but I'm not also um, compromising my beliefs. This one is probably my favorite just because it's like a hoodie, I like and I love hoodies. When I think of modesty, I think about someone's character. I think about somebody's speech, how they show up to places. So when people say, you know, modesty is boring, I say no. There's something about when you have the scarf and the abaya and you're like fully covered and, and people are trying to figure out who are you. And, and it's really what you say and how you speak that matters and not how you physically look. Yeah. I think there's just power in that. After talking with Efra, I wanted to get a better understanding of what it means to show up modest. Thankfully, I found Hafsa Lati, a Muslim-American journalist who covers fashion in the Middle East. She also penned the book, Modesty, A Fashion Paradox. Modesty is rooted in all three Abrahamic faiths, so Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. What I like to consider modest, it's clothing that typically covers the shoulders, often up to the wrists, covers the knees, often up to the ankles, has high le necklines, is loose-fitting, is not transparent, and often includes a head covering as well. The origin of the modest dress is actually very unclear as it's been embraced by many societies throughout history. For example, some of the earliest known wares are the ancient Greeks, the Islamic Empire, and the Ottomans in the 16th century. People in the Victorian era also valued a modest look, and throughout most of America's history, it was expected for women to dress more conservatively. It wasn't until the 1960s, during the sexual revolution, that fashion trends in the West started shifting towards more revealing clothing styles. And while this revolution was liberating for many, it unfortunately marginalized those who preferred a more modest appearance. Modesty can be oppressive when it is enforced. That is certainly oppressive. But also limiting modesty and putting rules and bans in place against modesty is oppressive. Fast forward to today, and thanks to the help of social media, dressing modestly is making a comeback. In fact, the term modest fashion emerged in the early 2000s to describe this rising trend. One of the um, really unique aspects of this modesty movement we're seeing now is a lot of these women who are choosing to cover up, many of their mothers, grandmothers never did so. Right. Um, they're making um, kind of the empowered choice to do so themselves. But also, many of them have been inspired by modest fashion bloggers on Instagram. The whole blogosphere in general really showed that there's a large market and demand for this sort of clothing. But despite the growing popularity, modest dressers continue to face various challenges and barriers. <laughs> 
This is especially true in sports. Here in the States, Minnesota boxer Amaya Safar was once disqualified in 2016 for wearing leggings and a hijab. Officials from US Boxing and the IBA, or the International Boxing Association, said that she violated the uniform code, citing safety concerns as the reason. Thankfully, in 2017, after outpourings from the public, US Boxing did allow Amaya to compete, making her the first boxer in a US competition to wear a hijab. The IBA lifted their ban of the apparel two years later. But as it stands, there are currently no explicit state or federal laws protecting athletes who dress modestly. Uniform codes are actually determined by school districts and athletic associations, which means that these rules also vary. Meet Nasteha Dior Sharif, a 15-year-old hijabi boxer who's preparing for a debut match in the fall. Dior was kind enough to share with me a little glimpse of her world, and she even gave me boxing lessons. But more on that later. The first place that she took me was Carmel Mall, the first and largest Somali shopping center in the United States. And even before I entered, I could see the vibrant colors and beautiful textiles that filled its halls. Carmel Mall is the type of place where basically you could come and buy the, t the types of clothing you cannot find online. Because a lot of clothing here is like more cultural and it's also like modest, it's more modest towards our religion. It's just like that one place we can all come together and just be near each other. So modest fashion, what is that to you? I think it's being able to dress the way you like to, dressing in a way that is more pleasing to you and towards God at the same time. The reason I like the store is because of all the dresses that they have. Oh, it has a, the, a scarf with it. But I would for sure go for this. A lot of people think that you have to dress really heavily or wear really big dresses, and it's not like that, you know. Modesty is different for everyone. I believe you could style anything in a modest way. How do you apply that to boxing then? Because when I'm just modestly, I don't really worry about the way people see me. I'm yeah. just more worried about getting the job done yeah. and being my best and showing up as my best. Before leaving, and while I did come to the mall for the clothes, I couldn't resist getting a henna tattoo and indulging in some delicacies. It smells so good. I can smell the food. This actually smells really nice. Like, I really like it. It's very secure. A couple days later, we finally entered the ring. You don't see your hijab as a barrier, correct? I don't. But I think currently, I'm not going to lie, don't see too many hijabi athletes. I hope other people could probably look at me and be like, oh, she's like me and she's doing this. I want to do it too. How do you feel whenever you are wearing modest clothing? I get to control who gets to see certain parts of my body and who doesn't. It gives me control and regulation over who I am and I guess what I'm made of. People newer to modest fashion may not realize that modest apparels can be just as fashionable, functional, and empowering to all who wear it. And ultimately, modesty, especially here in America, is a choice. And like any other outfits we choose to wear, it's an extension of our identity. And I'm good to go. Not bad. Good job. I didn't die, thankfully. Yeah, you, you did really great. Good. You let me punch you. So I'm thankful. Yeah.